What's up, YouTube? Pastor Bob here. Well, I wanted to show you my cart that I finally finished. OMB Warehouse forgot to send me a drift key for the new clutch that they sent me. Spend $120 on a clutch and don't even get a drift key. Uh, I mean, you'd think about that, wouldn't you? <laughs> I don't know. That's the kind of crap that pisses me off. But... What are you going to do, right? Anyway, I wanted to show you it. So, uh, I put a cam in this, grown the valves, ported it, ported the head. Um, what else did I do? Uh, new piston, new rod. Uh, I took the governor out. And the oil setting unit. Um, opened up the jet on the carburetor. Uh, I put a uh, uh, high performance coil in it. I didn't put a flywheel on it yet. That'll be the last thing, which is really not that hard to do. Uh, Ran a new fuel shutoff system, if you notice. There's two shutoffs. There's one here and one up there. And my reason for that is, if I ever have to pull a tank for some reason, there's a shutoff for the tank, and then there's a shutoff for this if there's any fuel left in this line. So, that's why I have two, two shutoffs. I custom made that pipe myself, um, but... Um, I'm not sure if I like it or not. I'll have to let it dwell on me for a little while. High flow air cleaner. I had to run a, I ran a special, uh, throttle cable system. Um, my reason is because I wanted to go with the original Manco Fox, um, throttle cable. So, because this is a Manco Fox, by the way. They're getting harder and harder to find, let me tell you. And, phew, oh my God, how expensive they are. And then over here, that torque converter is brand new. That's the one I'm complaining about because I didn't get a drift key with it. You'd think that people who sell so many of them would, have, would send a guy a drift key with it, right? Unbelievable. I mean, if I was making them, I'd make sure they had one because... They know that it takes the place of the stock torque converter, right? Suri 30 torque converter. Um, so they know that there's going to need to be a, a key there that they'd send you one. Nope, didn't send me one. I don't know. Uh, I got a 57 tooth uh, sprocket I put on there. A performance sprocket from Go Power Sports. As a matter of fact, I'll show you something here in a second. Uh, new new chain. Uh, as you can see, my tank's up here, and my reason for the tank being up here and not down there is uh, if something happens, it's much easier for me to shut that off at that height. I can reach back and shut that off. If something was to happen from the seat okay even upside down so if I'm sitting in the cockpit I can do that and that's why another reason why I did that um, so it's pretty much ready to go I put a new set of brake pads down there I drilled some holes in the um, in uh, the brake caliper which will give it better cooling and also will grip better I put new barons in the rear end, so there's new barons back there, and as you can tell, nice and smooth, all nice and smooth, everything's all lined up nice, a lot of time guys, a lot of time and stupid money, but I wanted to do it right. And uh, another thing, by having your fuel up there like that, 
it keeps it a little cooler than if you have it on top of your motor. And anybody that knows anything about fuel will tell you if it's cooler, it reacts differently when it's fired in a chamber. You know, I could really go into different fuel mixtures and E85 versus 87 versus 92, 95, you know, 99, 100, 104, you know, whatever. Um, but what most people don't know is that it has to do with the flash point, your fuel, right? And uh, the lower the ignition rate, you, you, um, you got a chance of hearing that knocking. And the knocking is because it's firing off uh, quick, because the flash point is quicker, right? And that's why you'll hear knocking when you're running uh, lower grade fuel. The reason why you don't have lead in fuel no more is because it's poisonous. And lead gets to your brain and causes, you know, brain problems. There's a lot that goes on with lead. So, even though lead probably ran a little bit better, it's not healthy. Especially when you got millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of cars on the road, you know. So, But anyway, uh, I got 26-pound valve springs in it. This is a Hemi 212. So, I don't know. I haven't started it up yet. I just got done hooking the, the hoses up and everything. But should be ready to rock and roll. Just got to have that drift key. That's it. So I had to order a whole big old kit. Because, you know, you can't find one. So I ordered a whole kit on Amazon. That should be coming in. So outside of that, a lot of work, guys. A lot of work. A lot of hours. And a lot of money over the last... Oh, God. I think it's taken me almost a year to complete this engine. Believe it or not. It's taken me about a year to build it. Parts here, parts there, but she's all done. So I got the front end done, and now I got the rear done, and all new bearings, so it should be ready to go. The biggest thing is, is don't let people use your cart because they never fix it when they break it, right? <laughs> Last thing I'm going to do is put some lights on it eventually. Um, I should be pretty much set. And I'm going to run some uh, underneath here. I'm going to run... Uh, some pieces so that way when I go through mud it doesn't splash up and wet my behind and I'm going to put a couple pieces back there keep some motor from getting splashed on so but that's coming up so I did want to show you I hope you all enjoy it uh, I'll be on tomorrow night for an auction hope to see you all I love you all take care do something good for somebody call somebody today say hi Go do something cool, right? It's beautiful weather out. It's supposed to be beautiful all weekend. Go find yourself something to do with friends and family. I love you all. Take care. It's Pastor Bob, and I'm out of here. See ya.